Okay, so ada tiga cara how you want to determine um, the quality of the soil aerations. Okay, so first determine the oxygen. Number two is uh, determine the porosity. Okay, number three is by the uh, knowing the changes of uh, redox potentials. Okay, so what is redox potential? We will see after this. Okay, so when we talk about uh, redox potentials, okay, pernah belajar kan dulu kan? Okay, so actually uh, soil aerations influence the either the, the element in the soils will undergo what we call as reductions and oxidation stage. Okay, pernah dengar kan? A reduced iron, reduced iron dengan oxidized iron. So, what is the difference? Okay, so dua benda ni walaupun the element is the same but it carries different characteristic to the soil. First, acidic condition ke tak acidic conditions? Okay, ada, ada, maksudnya ada, kalau Fe3 dia akan menyebabkan acidic conditions. Fe2 dia akan towards uh, pH dia akan higher lah. Okay, so it determines that. Number two, it determines the toxicity um, substances. Fe3 is more um, mobile. Okay, macam tu. Okay, so not only that, banyak lagi dia tunjuk. Okay, so uh, kejap lagi saya explain. So when we talk about uh, oxidation and reduction reactions, okay, ni adalah contoh uh, the changes of the iron 2, okay, we say Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. Okay, so if you look here, the changes from the left, okay, from uh, left to the right. Okay, you can see the, the FEO. FEO ni is uh, iron 2. Okay, so there is only one oxygen. Okay, so from the left to the right, it is the process of oxidation. Nampak tak kerja saya? Okay, so from left to the right, we call it the process of oxidation. The, the, the simplest thing that you can see adalah the O, dia jadi 2 O. Ada, maksudnya there is an addition of O. Oxidation kan? Mesti ada dalam keadaan yang ada oksigen. Okay. So from Fe2 to Fe3, what happen is that if you observe the equations, Fe2 will lose electron. Okay. Meaning dia akan keluarkan elektron. Okay. So these two electron is captured by the H plus. Okay. Tak apa. Yang ni jangan tengok lagi. Kita tengok yang atas eh. So Fe2, um, F2 tukar kepada F3. Okay, what will happen is dia akan buang dua elektron and dia akan turunkan dua H+. Okay, so by this process, meaning that with the kehadiran oksigen, oksigen ni daripada air because air ada H2O kan, ada O. Okay, so dia akan keluarkan dua H+. Okay, so dia akan keluarkan dua H+. That is the process of oxidation. So, a process of oxidation is where the H plus ions are produced by hydrolysing of the water. This is how the H plus is here. So, this action will actually lowering the solvates, meaning that kalau dalam keadaan ada uh, oxygen, tanah you akan, uh, actually it's a weathering processes. Weathering processes, oxidation is a weathering processes kan? Belajarkan dulu yang saya ajar, ada empat proses uh, chemical uh, weathering. Okay, so bila uh, weathering process happens, actually it is uh, lowering the soil pH because it is contributing the H plus through here. Okay, while another uh, condition is what uh, is when the Fe2, Fe3 are changed to Fe2. Okay, so when the Fe3 change into Fe2, the electron will be captured by the oxygen. Okay, so this is when the process of reduction occur. The oxygen act as an electron acceptor. Okay, they terima uh, electron ni. Okay, so oxygen ni diturunkan jadi H2O. 
that's why oxygen will be more depleted in the soil environment because it is not uh, only oxygen tapi oxygen ni dah diturunkan okay because it accept the electron while the process of oxidation is actually dia buang electron reduction is the oxygen will receive the electron tapi this these two uh, uh, actually uh, happen um, apa ni it can either uh, one by one or it can also happen simultaneously okay so uh, okay so that is the process of oxidations and reductions so when you talk about the process of oxidations and reductions it's actually a chemical reactions involving the exchange of electrons meaning that when there is oxidation process there is a loss of electron okay but when there is a reduction process there is someone has to be the electron acceptor so sebenarnya kita tak nak oksigen jadi elektron receptor. Sebab tu kita tak nak um, kawasan uh, tanah, eh kawasan tanah ni submerge with water. Dah lah kurang air. Kurang air ataupun bukan flooding lah tapi moisture dia tinggi so oksigen kurang. Dia akan turunkan oksigen. Okay and oksigen will be even lesser. Okay so the oxidation, uh, faham tak? Faham. Okay, eh? faham eh. So the oxidations and reduction always happen together or it can happen uh, jarang, uh, berbeza juga actually. So when one compound loses an electron, okay, for examples here, the, uh, the, the, just now is the Fe2 kan, okay. So another have to, uh, uh, another have to accept, okay, but usually it comes simultaneously lah, okay. So, The problem is when uh, oxidation happens when electrons are lost, reduction happens when electrons are gained. So the problem dekat sini adalah dia akan menyebabkan changes in soil chemistry. Okay, tengok sini eh. So when there is conditions of uh, what we call as other oxygen, okay, kan saya cakap tadi oxygen ni dia baik, okay, um, dia akan act as an electron receptor. So under a reduced state, okay, under a reduced state maksudnya kekurangan oksigen, kekurangan oksigen tapi masih ada oksigen lah kan. Oksigen will act as an electron receptor. Okay, so oksigen will receive the electron and change to H2O. Okay, dengar eh? sebab nanti kalau you tak dengar yang ni memang you takkan boleh explain sebab tak ada kat dalam ayat dalam ni. Okay, but you can always read from uh, from uh, reference. Okay, boleh tengok kat Google macam mana how this the process. Tapi saya tak tulis kat dalam ni. Okay, ada kot kat dalam ni. Tapi um, takut tak clear. Bukan takut tak clear, you kena dengar. Okay, so oxygen will be changed to H2O. Settle satu. Maksudnya dia dah gunakan oxygen as an electron acceptor. Number two is when the oxygen is finished. Air masih uh, uh, air masih lagi bertakung. Udara dah tak ada. So what will the electron do? Okay, elektron ni dihasilkan oleh siapa? Dihasilkan oleh ion tadi kan? Faham eh? Mas Rizal? Elektron dihasilkan oleh siapa? Ion. Ha? Eh. Ha, uh, ion. Ah, uh, saja je. Okay. So, dia dihasilkan oleh ion. Lepas ion punya elektron ni, dia attack oksigen. Dia attack number two is the nitrate. That is the problem comes. Bila dia attack nitrate, nitrate is what? Who's now? Okay, Shireen. Nitrate is what? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Ah, the nutrient. There is a part of nutrient. Again, so the problems comes here. Bila dalam keadaan yang reduce oxygen, dah tak ada oxygen dalam keadaan reduce state, ion ni dia punya dia akan hasilkan elektron lagi, dia akan turun lagi ion tu yang turun, and the electron will attack the nitrate. When the electron attack the nitrate, meaning that what? Meaning apa? Meaning what? Hmm. 
Mini. Sarah Muhammad Fati. Maksudnya apa? Tidak tahu. Ah, maksud dia apa? Boleh ulang tak ada. Ya, macam sekat-sekat kat sini. Eh, hey, mana ada sekat-sekat? Okay. Uh, Sarah Hani. What will happen? Nah, dia jawab kat situ pula. Kenapa? <laughs> Speaker tak boleh eh. Bukan attract. Attack. Electron attack. Bukan attract. Jadi apa? Saya tak tahu doktor. Okey, bila elektron attack nitrate, nitrate jadi N2. Nitrate ni diperlukan sebagai pokok diperlukan oleh pokok. So, the nitrogen won't be able for the crops. Okey. So dah satu masalah lain. Tadi dah lah tak ada oksigen. Oksigen uh, roots tak boleh buat respiration. The then the attack nitrate pula. So nitrogen nitrogen fertilizer is not available to the crops, kan? Settle yang tu. Then habis nitrogen ditukar jadi N2. Maksudnya dia jadi gases. Nitrogen ni losses to gases sebab digunakan oksigen yang ada pada O ni tadi. NO3 kan ada tiga molecules oksigen kat sini. Okay. Then dia kenal pula si manganese oxide ni. So dia attack manganese oxide dan Elektron akan meng attack manganese oxide and dia akan turunkan kepada MN2+. Lepas tu dah tak ada oksigen, dia akan attack balik pada Fe3+. Dan attack kepada sulfate and also the last one is carbon dioxide. Okay so dia attack by stage tau. Okay so that's why this graph showed a sequence of the uh, following submergence. Okay, the elements that to be attacked first is the oxygen followed by the nitrate, manganese oxide, iron 3 plus, sulfate and lastly it will attack the carbon dioxide. Bila dia attack carbon dioxide, that is the problems where CH4 ni apa? Nisrina or one Nisrina? What is CH4? Methane. Betul. Okay, so bila dihasilkan methane, methane ni is a toxic substances. So dalam keadaan tu, it's not a favourable conditions to crop for crop to grow. Faham eh? Okay. Okay, so that that will cause a change in chemistry. Okay, not only that, banyak consequence dia kalau you tengok saya dia mula-mula dia attack oxygen, then nitrogen will not be available. Lastly, dia attack carbon dioxide, that is the toxic element are produced and lagilah pokok tak nak hidup dalam keadaan unfavorable conditions. So the 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 idea is that actually the rules of oxygen is actually Oxygen have to be there but it has to be like this macam berganti lah. Okay. Sebab when the oxygen are reduced, 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 dia akan menyebabkan it attack another substances. Okay. So uh, oxygen is a strong oxidizing agent. What is a strong oxidizing agent? Meaning that it is, uh, it is dia baik. Dia tolong terima je all the electrons. Okay. So, uh, sama lah yang dekat bawah ni saya letak je so that you can have a looks on how it uh, changed. Okay, um, but the 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 idea is tadi lah yang saya explain on this graph. Okay, so uh, organic carbon oxidation 
and oxygen reactions. Okay, so the decompositions of the process of organ the decomposition process of organic carbons also use oxygen. Okay, so uh, by far the most prevalent electron donor is organic carbon. Okay, so process of decomposition sebenarnya dia menggunakan terlalu banyak oksigen. Okay, so carbohydrate oxidation serve as an examples of organic carbon ox dioxidations to carbon dioxide. So CH2O which is the organic carbon with the additions of water, meaning there is an air and water, it will produce four electrons. Okay, that's why you cannot accelerate the process of decomposition. How you accelerate the process of decomposition? That is by tillage activity. Kalau you do extensive tillage, you akan menyebabkan, extensive tillage ni maksudnya macam you gemburkan tanah. Bila you gemburkan tanah extensively, you akan dedahkan tanah tu kepada oksigen. Memanglah you fasten the process tak, but that is too fast. Okay, so you fasten the process of decomposition, meaning that there is uh, a fast consumption of oxygen. Eh? So um, that's why tillage activities are by time, it reduces the organic uh, matter content in the soil environment. That's why we go for conservation tillage. Okay, kurang usik tanah tu. Okay, so the most prevalent electron is actually the oxygen. Okay, so uh, later you can have a look on this lah. So in, in, in... Uh, apa ni in susunan okay the oxygen uh, comes first then the nitrates then the manganese iron tree uh, this uh, eh sepatutnya ni bukan ni eh then the uh, sulfate manganese kan eh manganese tak eh sebab sometimes saya ambil tu sebab iron tree iron tree sulfate manganese iron tree sulfate carbon dioxide manganese Sulfate. Okay. A ni buang. Oh so sorry. Yang ni uh, sulfate dia dekat belakang. Okay. So this is another um, additions lah. But sulfate will be the last and uh, the last one is the carbon dioxide. Okay. So please follow yang this one eh. The chemical reduction sequences. Nanti saya delete yang ni sebab it's quite confusing. Okay. Dah hang dah. Okay. Okay. So, um, in aerobic conditions, okay, these are some examples, okay, uh, which is yang tadi lah. So, under aerobic conditions, sebenarnya, uh, dia akan uh, produce 10 electrons which dia akan uh, reduce the nitrates kepada N2. Okay. So, nampak eh the reductions of kejap, the reductions of the nitrate to the N2 akan hasilkan 12 H+. So, what does it mean uh, 12 H+, ni? Uh, siapa? Nurin? What this? The reduction lah. Bukan, bukan. Dia, okay, reduction is the process daripada sini kepada sini. That is the reduction process. Nitrate ditukar kepada N2. Tapi during this process, apa ni? Dia consume berapa ni? Dia consume 12 H. Maksudnya dia akan menyebabkan tanah tu lebih, lebih, lebih berasid kan? Ah, uh, uh, okay. So electrons from organic matter in soils are accepted by the uh, nitrate. So this is the process of uh, that if there is a decomposition process yang kat dalam ni. This is example eh. Okay. So dalam proses ni decomposition occur. Decomposition produce electron. Macam saya cakap tadi kan decomposition produce berapa electron? Empat electron. So empat. Okay let's say here dia hasilkan sepuluh electrons. Okay because of um, because of uh, this is a study kan so 10 electron akan uh, uh, accepted by the nitrates instead of oxygen because the oxygen is no more oxygen is under these conditions dalam keadaan yang berair macam ni dia dah tak ada oxygen so the nitrates are reduced in the compounds and to be changed to the nitrogen gases okay so the hydrogen ion will react the with oxygen from the nitrate 
to produce the H2O. Okay. So uh, forms of compound, uh, ni sama je, benda yang sama. Cuma saya nak letak dalam uh, apa ni, hmm, table. Okay, sometimes uh, the same because of saya nak you observe a few gambar, ada yang give a few information kan. Okay, so actually the process uh, also uh, um, uh, also aided by the bacteria. Dia tak berlaku sendiri. Contohnya, uh, the process of um, uh, tukar daripada each element dia akan digunakan uh, dibuat oleh this lah denitrifying bacteria kalau untuk nitrate kalau untuk manganese kita ada manganese reducing bacteria metalloginium okey kalau untuk iron kita ada own bacteria so, jadi uh, macam pseudomonas ni dia tak akan tolong uh, buat iron reducing um, uh, iron uh, reducing process dia tak akan tolong because each of um, each of uh, bacteria ataupun uh, microbes have their roles in each element. Okay, so sulfate adalah uh, sulfate reducing bacteria which is the disulfibrio. Okay, so um, uh, it is aided by a particular um, bacteria. Okay, so uh, the electrons are, this is sama juga, semua saya nak tunjuk. Kalau you nampak dekat sini kan, kalau kita pergi dekat side, actually I show you this thing lah. Kalau you nampak, dia, this is what we call as mottles. Okay, mottles ni macam patches lah eh. Patches of ni, you nampak, you boleh actually you boleh explain. Kenapa dekat tengah dia ni, uh, sekejap. Kenapa dekat tengah dia ni, dia macam uh, apa ni, uh, what is that? Dia... Dia kelabu tapi dekat keliling-keliling dia ni dia oxidize. Why? Okay so it, it actually has a reason. Okay for example dekat roots ni roots dia akan keluarkan uh, dia akan uh, ada accumulation of water at the surface and dekat luar tu ada uh, lebih oxygen. Okay, so when there is accumulations at root surface tu dia akan reduce the availability of the uh, oxygen compared to area because roots also do the respiration process kan then dia gunakan oxygen tu okay so uh, dekat luar ni is more having oxygen tapi kenapa kat luar ni pula dia kena kelabu let's say dia uh, mottles with uh, mottles with orange tapi the background is actually grey okay that is because of the texture texture dia ni sebenarnya dia menyimpan air ni Okay, and, uh, and kalau you tengok dia macam clay kan. Okay, so actually um, the, the first thing first yang kita nampak adalah warna kelabu. Then we express that, uh, we express the uh, that the area has mottles of uh, orange patches, orange colour. Okay, so uh, macam itulah when we describe a soil. Okay. Okay, then... Um, Okay, these are the same examples. If you see here, the redox features, uh, there is an iron depletion. Okay, uh, what we call as there is a grey mottle, warna, warna kelabu ni. Then we also have what we call as the uh, iron concentration, okay, which is the oxidized iron representing by the red mottles. Okay, so sometimes kenapa ada mottles ni, that is because of the... Um, the, the texture, the texture ada sedikit berbeza dengan laluan air. Okay, kalau you nampak yang warna hijau-hijau ni, dia lebih kepada dia menyimpan air eh. That's why it's in a reduced state. Tapi kalau yang kat kawasan kawasan orange ni, sometimes because dalam susunan tanah tu, it might have like sand in that particular area <coughs> that it has a better flow of water. So, tak ada water kat dalam ni, less water. Meaning that there is an available oxygen. Tu satulah. Okay, and one more that is because uh, there is a clay. Might be dekat sini ada clay accumulations. Okay, Ac clay accumulations, clay yang akan appearkan, um, appearkan tanah tu jadi orange. Betul tak? Because clay, only clay can carry the iron. Kalau macam sand tak. Okay, but the sand has to be there lah because when only clay sahaja, 
dia akan jadi warna kelabu sebab dia absorb air kan, clay ni kan, dia macam tanah liat kan. Tapi kalau dia ada additions of sand, maksudnya dia punya flow of water are good sebab tu dia can appear as orange. Faham eh? Mas Rizal? Faham tu eh? Okay, so this is a, a few process in real how uh, how um, oxidation and reduction process occur. Kalau you tengok dekat sini, um, uh, ini dekat kawasan padi eh. Kalau kat kawasan padi kita ada uh, kawasan yang ada oksigen dekat atas sikit. Kawasan uh, bawah sikit adalah kawasan dah tak ada oksigen. Okay, dan uh, anoxic adalah kawasan yang lagi tak ada oksigen. Okay, so dalam keadaan yang tak ada oksigen, F2 dia duduk dalam keadaan what we call as precipitation. Dia duduk diam-diam, dia baik je. Sebenarnya pyrite ni baik. Biar dia duduk dalam pyrite tak apa. Okay, dalam bentuk compound. Okay, tapi when the pyrite is exposed to sub-oxic oxygen, uh, sub zone, meaning that there is a few oxygen, the iron Okay sorry, that, bila dia naik atas, dia akan naik atas dulu sebab dia akan uh, jadi Fe3 dulu. Okay, so Fe3 dia akan uh, go under uh, undergo the process of uh, oxidations. Okay, so if dia dalam keadaan Fe2, okay, dia, dia akan diturunkan. Fe3 dia akan like precipitate ke bawah tau. Okay, dia akan precipitate ke bawah, dia akan jadi Fe2 plus. Okay, so this and this they keep on bertukar-tukar depending on the oxygen levels and sometimes sebab kawasan kawasan uh, padi bila you keringkan air dia jadi lain bila you submergekan air dia jadi lain sebab dia berubah dia boleh berubah jadi Fe2 and Fe3 okey tapi actually dalam keadaan pengurusan tanah kita nak dia biar je dalam keadaan pyrite because bila dalam keadaan macam ni dia akan menyebabkan tanah tu nampak eh bila dia tukar kepada Fe3+, dia akan menyebabkan tanah tu berasid. Tak nampak ke saya? Ni ya. There is a production of uh, 3H+. Okay. So uh, ni akan menyebabkan uh, pH reduce to 4.0. Okay. Due to all the acidation of pyrite. Kita tak nak yang pyrite ni kita tak nak dia naik atas. Jadi kita tak nak dia tak oksida sebab the problem is bila dia tak oksida dia akan hasilkan even worse the pH. Okay. So if it's in Fe2 depends. Dia boleh change terus kepada Fe3 kalau kawasan tu dikeringkan terus. Okay dia boleh jadi separa which is sub oxygen ada oksigen sikit ada water sikit dia jadi Fe2 dulu. Tapi sometimes dia boleh jadi Fe3 terus. Okay. Okay, so this is the manganese cycle. Sama juga, dia boleh into M MN2 plus. Okay, and also in the conditions of N M MNO. Tapi this this problem is not very, uh, very, very problematic because it doesn't uh, produce much H plus. Eh? Tapi kalau Fe tadi, yes. Okay. And this is nitrogen. Okay, kalau you nampak nitrogen under sub-oxic conditions di dalam bentuk minerals. Okay, so dalam bentuk minerals dia akan tukar kepada N2 dulu. N2, NO, lambat dia nak tukar kepada NO3. Tapi, itu dalam oxic conditions. Kalau oksigen tak cukup, dia akan attack O3. Dia akan turunkan balik kepada N2. N2 N, uh, akan pergi ke udara, losses. Hilang. That is the process of denitrification. Eh? Okay, uh, ni sama juga. The sulfur also mula-mula dalam keadaan S2 and dia akan jadi sulfate. Okay, so sulfate dia akan attack. Okay, and dia akan jadi. Uh, sulfate jadi apa tadi? Sekejap. What is that? I also forget. Okay, uh, dia akan jadi uh, H2S. H2S carry the acidic punya characteristic. Okay. Okay, so this is some sulfate yang ni untuk is uh, carbon dioxide. So uh, under reduced conditions, carbon dioxide can be changed into CH4 which is the uh, methane products. Okay. So uh, some conclusions that we can achieve, uh, we can know about aerations is uh, what is the form? How is the mobility? Is it a toxic element? That is the question. Okay, yang kita dah faham. Okay, how will it affect the roots? How is the process of decomposition affecting the aerations? Kita dah tahu and 
actually bila you nampak kan bila kawasan yang submerge area macam ni dia akan hasilkan CH4. Kawasan padi lah ni pokok padi. Bila dia hasilkan CH4, it is a part of greenhouse gases. Sebab tu ada orang macam cakap lah uh, memang ada isu tentang penanaman padi. Penanaman padi ni akan menghasilkan banyak greenhouse gases. That is because of the kawasan is not a well aerated soil. Okay, the same goes not only si uh, carbon dioxide yang trap ni tadi eh. Dan juga uh, apa ni, nitrogen. Sebab nitrogen ni dia akan hasilkan N2. N2 gabung dengan oxygen from the atmosphere dia akan hasilkan NO. NO is the nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is the greenhouse gases. So daripada penanaman padi sahaja dalam uh, apa ni dia merosakkan pH tanah but it will also produce a what we call as greenhouse gases. So that's the issue lah. Okay. So uh, by the forms and mobility this is the same thing which I summarized okay for you to uh, wrap up. Okay, so so urchin actually determines the forms of chemicals are present and how mobile they are. F2 and Fe3, Fe, F E2 and iron 3 is, iron 3 is more mobile. Mobile ni maksudnya dia easily carried away. So bila dia easily carried away, dia akan jadi toxic substances. Contohnya macam banjir sekarang. sekarang. Kalau di dalam keadaan Fe3+, dia easily mobile, dia akan enter the aquatic environment. Which it might harm you punya, uh, might harm you punya, uh, uh, apa ni? Allah Akbar, you punya aquatic environment lah, you punya ikan ke apa semua might 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 not um, Sebab tu dia kena berada dalam keadaan compound When it sits in a compound form, dia tak easily mobile Okay, so um, uh, poly aerated soil, you should know it's in reduced forms Fe2+, Mn2+, if it's an oxidized form, dia Fe3+, and Fe, uh, uh, Mn2 uh, 3 plus. Okay. So reduced iron is solubles. Okay. Uh, solubles meaning it's mobile. Okay. It can move through salts, removing rate, leaving rate and low chroma colors. Okay. Which it will enter the salt water. That is the ni lah. Another problem is if it's a poorly aerated salts, reduced manganese will cause another problem. Dia akan jadi macam keras. Okay. It will cause a hard black concretions. Okay, tanah tu macam semen jadi. So that's are uh, some um, changes that occurs uh, uh, considering the physical and chemical changes. Eh, uh, a well aerated soils, oxidized forms of iron and manganese. Okay, iron three Mn positive. Okay, iron precipitate as iron in Arabic iron three plus in Arabic zones or during dry periods. Okay, while the uh, reddish brown to orange indicates there is a um, uh, 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 oxidized forms of iron and manganese. Okay, so the sebab tu kita boleh indicates that through uh, our naked eyes. Kita boleh nampak je. So we can indicate, okay, so that is uh, iron or manganese that is um, oxidized represented by the orange color uh, but if the, um, the, the salt is uh, slightly grey, so it indicates there is a reduced state. Okay. Oh, so these are some of how they want to determine the contents of the salts, the chemicals, properties of the salts by the changes of the soil colour. Okay, uh, these are the changes of the color. Kalau you nampak, uh, the sequence are um, from uh, reduced state. Okay, jadi whitish. Whitish ni selalunya they carry calcium and also magnesium. Okay, so uh, if the 
the the uh, the salts appear as orange macam ni kita tahu it's either iron or manganese so that kalau dia appear as whitish color slightly ada orange orange ni that is an additions of the um ada 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 unsur calcium and magnesium okay so dekat atas ni tak ada because of the uh, the, the iron and manganese are usually oxidized Okay, so ni kalau you nampak uh, the effects of poor drainage on soil color. Okay, the, so the gray colors and the red redox conclusions in the behoriasons of a uh, a soil, a type of soil. Okay, so you nampak dekat sini ada slightly orange-orange color. There is that kawasan tu mesti ada oksigen. Sebab tu dia boleh uh, oxidize into oxidize into orange color. Tapi kawasan yang tak ada ni might be that is because of the texture lah. How the 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 how the soil can how the air can enter to the top uh, to the down parts. Okay, that is because of the texture, the the physical properties effects. Okay, this is the manganese conclusion. Okay, manganese conclusions under the reduced state. Kali kan reduced manganese dia akan menyebabkan macam dia jadi semen semen eh macam semen. Okay, so another um, that we can see is that um, plant can use oxidized, oxidized form of nitrogen and sulfur. That is the good part because kalau tak ada process of oxidation, nitrogen takkan jadi nitrate. Okay, and sulfur takkan jadi sulfate which is uh, that, um, that state, bukan that state eh, that, what is that eh, that, that forms of nitrogen is readily uptake by the crops. Okay. So but under reduced iron and manganese, okay, it is what we call as soluble good in alkaline soil. Okay. However, it is oxidized, it is acidic type of soils. Okay. So it can be more soluble if it's in an acid soil. Macam saya cakap tadi, iron jadi iron 3 plus. It is soluble. Soluble, soluble maksudnya it is mobile. Okay, and it can reach toxic levels where it can enter the water bodies and you punya agriculture area. Okay, so under conditions of reduced, also uh, for examples arsenic, it's, it's very toxic. So, oxidations and reduction state actually determine either the, 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 the elements is toxic or not. But it is different lah, different. Contoh arsenic di dalam keadaan reduced dia toxic. Okay, tapi ada yang toxic, that is toxic lah. So, under reduced state of, uh, 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 oxidized state of iron, the mobile tu lah cerita dia. Okay, so it determines the mobile and toxicity stage of an element. Okay, so uh, aerations, okay, good uh, aeration promotes root respirations. A poor aeration, of course, it uh, blocks oxygen. Okay, and the roots cannot use um, the the... The roots cannot use the, what is that? The, the oxygen. Okay. So, uh, decompositions can add in mines, in aerated soils, aerobic organic, uh, or, or aerobic organisms rapidly or, or oxidize the organic materials. Okay. So, the decompositions is rapid when the oxygens, uh, the, the, the organic materials are, are exposed to oxygen. Okay. However, in poor aerations, an aerobic decomposition occurs. Okay, so uh, uh, aerobic decompositions, the decompositions is slower. Okay, A greenhouse gases should be in your mind when we talk about perkara-perkara uh, ni. Contohnya macam banjir ni lah you boleh nampak kan. Okay, so uh, under under submerged conditions ataupun water lock area, there is a production of nitroxide. Saya tunjuk macam yang dekat padi tadi kan. Where there is the production of N2 and also methane. Okay. That is contributing to the uh, global warming ataupun greenhouse gases. Okay. So what is actually the factors that affecting soil erosions? Okay. Of course, drainage of excess water. Okay. Rates of respirations. Okay. Berap macam ikan dalam aquarium tadi. Is it sufficient to sustain that numbers of organisms living in the soils or not? Okay. And the soil heterogeneity, meaning heterogeneity, meaning that um, the characteristics of the soils lah. 
Okay. So drainage of excess water, of course, it is governed by the texture, aggregates, soil aggregates, and also organic matter contents, which uh, a good soil um, infiltrations and water populations will enhance the process or uh, would enhance the availability of oxygens in the soil. Okay. Rates of respirations, okay, lagi banyak pokok tu lagi reduce the numbers of the oxygen in the soils, okay. So cycling of plant residues and also decompositions will provide substrate for microbial activities but it also will, con will consume oxygen, okay. So heterogeneity is of course, okay, uh, your tillage practices macam saya cakap tadi, your um, apa, uh, tillage activities such as um, uh, apa ni, long term agriculture you guna jentera berat ke tak it will cause um, soil compaction okay so soil compactions akan menyebabkan uh, reduce pore space reduce pore space reduce macro macro pores which will result in uh, apa which will result in reducing the oxygen uh, exchange the uh, gases exchange okay the last one is the pore size okay so oxygen gas diffuse slowly through small largely water filled pores between aggregates and aerobic conditions might occur at these aggregates okay so uh, a good pore size will allow the oxygen to be exchanged a good macro pores eh? Okay, so plant roots, it also depends on plant roots, what types of plant roots. Okay, so uh, some plant roots can uh, do respirations under an aerobic condition. Contohnya macam pokok bakau, pokok uh, paddy. Okay, so in opposite conditions, wet soil, which is hydrophatic uh, plants, uh, which has arenchyma tissues, can, uh, can, can breathe uh, under submerged conditions. Okay. So, in conclusions, what we you have to understand adalah tadilah what is the process of re, re, reductions, what is the process of oxidations, okay? What is, uh, what, uh, what, is what, what happens when the soil is submerged with water? What is the effect to the microorganisms? What does it affect to the chemical uh, substances changes, okay? But turutan dia kena ingat. Okay, first it attack oxygen, then it attack nitrogen, then it attack, man it attack manganese, manganese then sulfate. Sulfate lastly is the uh, carbon dioxide. So, a clue dia apa? A clue dia ada greenhouse gases, uh, less of nitrogen available to the crops. Okay, lagi apa? Okay, all those yang tadi lah. That is the, 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 the point that you have to remember lah. So, this reduction process causes a shift in the chemical compounds that he found in some soil. So, Sambil dia tukar that compound, what changes that does it make to the soils? Of course, we can see the soil color, the soil pH because there is a production of H plus and, and also it affects the availability of the nutrients to the plants and also the greenhouse gases. Okay, clear eh, Nurin? Zohari? Yes. Zohari is okay? Zohada? Okay. Farisha, okay, Farisha. Okay. Aniso, tak ada eh? Aniso, are you here? Aniso, tak ada. Okay, uh, kita take five. Lepas tu kita sambung. Lagi sikit je, soal temperature je. Sekejap je. Soal temperature ni pun sikit je sebenarnya. Because um, kita tak berapa involved dengan tef soal temperature. Okay, take five eh.
Okay, so can we continue? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, doctor. So we have already see how the uh, oxygen ataupun irritations uh, affects the uh, chemicals and also physical changes of the soils. Kalau you tengok semua, it is interrelated. You have to understand the the fundamentals ataupun the principles um, reaction, uh, apa tu, principle factors ataupun principle facts that governs the processes in the soil so that you can relate that. Okay, sebenarnya dia tak banyak. Tapi you have to relate. You have to understand. Then it's easier for you to explain. Okay. So, okay. So, we move to another, um, just a short chapter. Okay, because um, in Malaysia, we don't usually have these problems. Okay, so it, it is uh, importance of soil temperature. Soil temperature also is very important. For examples, uh, dekat kawasan, uh, apa ni, dekat de kawasan uh, Mediterranean ataupun in area yang ada empat musim. So, they have to plan their, their uh, apa ni, planting season. Okay, so it affects plant growth directly. Okay, so all crops practically slow down their growth below the soil temperature of about 9 degrees Celsius and above the soil temperatures of above 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it also affects the uh, potential seed germinations and the growth of underground portions, for example, yang ada ubi. Okay, so usually all the soil organisms, yeah, uh, this lavinia suka duduk dekat kawasan yang ada temperature around 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, so at this, uh, at, at, at temperature higher than that, it will kill the microorganisms. Not only that, but also it also uh, disturb the enzyme processes. Okay, so the optimum soil temperature of uh, nitrification, meaning that nitrification is process of uh, changing of nitrogen to a nitrate. So it is optimum at temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, so, so but it is aided by microorganism. Yeah? Ada nak cakap? Uh, Doctor, oh, uh, tak 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 Okay, nampak eh? Okay, so uh, dia, dia akan affect pokok lah. Affect pokok tu macam actually pokok ni suhu kita dah is the best. It's around 28 to 35 degrees Celsius. More than that, enzim dalam pokok sebab pokok pun dipengaruhi physiological effects dia. Stomata changes kan? Stoma, stomata dia. Dia kan ada matahari, dia kan ada temperature. Okay, baru dia punya enzim are at optimum. Kalau tak, dia tak boleh reach optimum. Bila dia tak reach optimum, dia akan menyebabkan the yield are produced um, uh, less than the maximum lah. Okay, but uh, and temperature also actually influence the... Uh, sekejap eh. Okay, uh, it is also um, affects the uh, influence of the soil moisture because the higher the temperature, the higher the temperature, the lower the contents of, uh, the lower the contents of the moisture, kan? And it also affects the oxygen status, okay? Because the higher the temperature is actually um, slightly the oxygen will will be restricted okay and also it affects the availability of the plant nutrients because the plant nutrients especially especially the nitrogen phosphorus sulfur and calcium cycles are aided by the microorganism activities they perlukan microorganism untuk change the nutrient if there is no microorganisms the nutrients cannot be changed to available form Okay, so warm soil temperatures generally induce plant germinations and growth. Okay, seeds of plants are adapted to open gaps react to the warm soil temperature caused by the side, direct solar radiations, meaning they need the heat for them to 
germinates okay and also grow so seeds of for example seeds of prairie okay which is the grasses require a cold period to enable them to germinate okay this is another um and other situations which we call as vernalizations dia perlukan satu cold period baru dia boleh germinate okay so the the the, the important part here is to plan your your uh your time of uh, planting the crops okay so some plants such as tulips require chilling in early winter to develop the buds okay so vernalization is what vernalization is a period what they need before they can uh, they can flower or they can germinate okay Okay, so uh, this is the effects of temperatures on the root development. As the temperature increase, the roots developments will be increased. But after a certain uh, optimum levels, okay, for example, here is 20 degrees Celsius. This is, um, saya ambil daripada internet. So, tapi um, maybe this is the uh, four season, in four season country. So, 20 degrees, uh, and depends on the crops. Each crops require different to, macam oil palm, they need macam 30, 32, 31 degrees Celsius. Okay, baru dia nak grow very well. Dia perlukan cahaya and also the the heat. Okay, so um, this thing is that uh, what I want to show here, it, it has optimum which is 20 degrees Celsius. After then that, the, it start to reduce back. So that is how need. And soil is actually, dia act as a macam, dia, soil ni dia macam sponge kan. Dia serap haba tu. Okay, so this is the same. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it has uh, different uh, temperature conditions. Kalau you nampak set cucumber is around ni in uh, Fahrenheit, 60 to 90 degree, 95 uh, Fahrenheit. Okay, so um, different types of crops require different tools. For example, kat Malaysia kita memang sepanjang masa boleh tanam. Sepanjang musim. Tapi not in four season country. They have to plant during summer ataupun uh, when they want to germinate the seed. Okay, at uh, after apa, at early summer ataupun early spring ke, dia dah germinate seed dia. So that the growth will focus more on the summer set, uh, summer uh, summer apa ni season. Okay, so uh, the absorption and loss of solar energy is what we call as albedo. Okay, so what is albedo? Albedo adalah kalau tanah tu have a high organic matter, the color will uh, slightly chocolate or black color kan. Okay, so selalunya macam kawasan pantai, panas kan. That is because of 50% uh, of, 80% uh, of the solar radiations, uh, sorry, 80% of the solar radiations is reflected back to the air. That's why dia ada heat tu dekat pantai. But if the soil macam dekat kawasan rumah kita, the soil will absorb the 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 heat. Okay. So bila uh, soil absorb the heat, the heat will be stored in the soil. So it's it's another good thing is that soil can act as a heat um, sponge lah. Macam sponge, dia tolong simpan. Okay. So albedo, uh, it affects, uh, it actually um, uh, have the effects aspect on angles that which the sunlight strike the soils. It depends, okay. And rain on temperate countries, okay. Uh, this is, but uh, tadi tadi, and loss of solar energy by rain, okay. So uh, in temperate countries, we have spring and summer. So the rainfalls are different, okay. So, uh, and also the soil cover. A bare soil cools and warms quickly compared to a cover uh, a, a a soil with cover crops okay so uh, just a simple one je yang ni temperature okay so sebab itulah kawasan pantai the temperature are higher not only because of the soil texture tapi also because of the temperature are higher warm temperature that it restrict the growth of certain crops and also um, living microorganisms Okay, so kalau sebenarnya kita, bila kita nak control temperature ni, not only temperature we want to control, but we also want to control the moisture. Okay, sebab kalau temperature tinggi, automatic moisture akan losses kan? So, akan hilang, moisture akan hilang. So, organic mulches and plant residue management is uh, is one of the practices that we can do to control the losses of the moisture ataupun to reduce the impact of the heat. 
Okay, it influence by soil cover. Okay, the 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 very good thing is that kita guna mulching, mulching technique. So mulching technique ni boleh divide into two, which is what we calls as ah uh, kita guna conservation mulching, ataupun kita guna macam um, sebut sebut kayu ataupun ah uh, kita punya sisa-sisa harvest tu kita susun balik dekat atas tanah tu kan. Okay so another one is kita yang paling senang lah pernah nampak kan kita guna plastic mulch. Okay so plastic mulch ni pun ada dua jenis. Satu warna silver dia macam silver kan sebab dia boleh reflect the cahaya. Ha. Satu lagi warna hitam. It is not suggested dulu-dulu sebab might be orang tak kita tak belajar lagi on this. Bukan kita lah I mean the the bahagian agriculture kan. So sebenarnya bila you pakai hitam walaupun you you conserve the moisture je. Tapi actually the temperature are rising sebab dia pakai hitam kan dia menyerap haba tu masuk dalam tanah. So it's not very good lah to observe the uh, to to use uh, black plastic much. Okay then we have to uh, how we want to check the soil temperature adalah kita guna what we call as in situ um in situ uh, device. Okay, can we check the temperature? Okay. Okay, so that's all untuk temperature. So, any questions tak? Yang ni saya nak makin dulu lah. Any question tak? Ada siapa-siapa nak tanya? Okay, tak ada soalan eh. Syuhada faham Syuhada? Faham. Okay, temperature tu senang je. Yang penting yang uh, tadi, aeration tu you have to understand, okay? Temperature direct je. Okay, kalau tak ada soalan. Okay, so uh, saya nak terangkan balik eh. Uh, lab semua-semua so make sure you submit on time. So sekarang pada saya because um, I did not give you assignment ataupun lab report based on saya suka hati bagi. Okay, you can always refer back to your, uh, to your, apa ni panggil, course outline. Okay, so course outline kita require 4 lab, 1 field trip, 1 quiz, 2 assignment and 1 presentation. Okay, so sekarang ni lab 1, lab 2, lab 3 kita dah settle, assignment 1 dah settle. Uh, okay, so for this week saya akan bagi 2 uh, perkara which is lab 4 and also field trip. Okay. So lab 4, uh, we don't have any session petang. Kita setelkan pagi eh. So uh, okay. Untuk lab. Okay. Untuk lab, lab 4 adalah. Eh mana lab 4 saya? Okay. Field trip dulu. Okay. Dengar eh. This is your assignment. This is all. Uh, this is field trip. Okay, selalunya kalau field trip, kalau dekat sini kita akan uh, pergi ke Cameron Highlands ataupun pergi ke Cerating untuk we observe the soil management ataupun soil yang kita dah belajar kan. Uh, okay, so this is assume it is your field trip but it is a field trip through observation which will be conducted around your housing area. Okay, which is either kalau you do kat campus, campus area lah. So anywhere, kalau you nak pergi, you uh, minggu ni nak pergi janda baik. Okay, yes, you can also observe. The, ta the tajuk is land management practices in conserving the soil. Okay, so you have learned about erosion, tillage, okay, and all the activities, the, the, the core of it. Okay, macam physical properties, kenapa you have to have a good structure. Okay, then kenapa you have, uh, have to have a good soil erosion. Can you... Uh, can you do agriculture activities dekat highlands area from what you can observe nowadays? Kalau you tengok dekat karak, dekat, ben, dekat karak bentung kan, uh, you can see that uh, the flooding is also carrying the uh, the lock. Maksudnya kayu-kayu balak dan ranting-ranting kayu semua jatuh. So can you predict something okay, which I had explained during my class what is happening with our environment? Okay, with our land management nowadays, okay, that is caused by human anthropogenic activities ataupun it impacts. Okay, so your task is to observe, to observe on the closest lah that you can do. Okay, for examples, uh, uh, siapa ni? 
that uh, so tu husna husna duduk kat bentung banjir kan okay what you can observe dekat tanah-tanah dekat situ apa yang tengah jadi sekarang okay that is about macam environment and soil okay you are required to complete this task by group satu group ada lima orang lima atau enam lah sebab kita ada dua puluh satu orang eh nanti saya listkan nama tu Okay, so uh, which one you prefer? Do you prefer to choose your own friend uh, in doing groups ataupun you nak saya pilih the groups? Any answer? Okay, kalau tak ada jawapan saya je pilih yang groups tu. Okay, so in one group you should have five to six students. Okay. You should have four to five contents of land management observed. Contoh, Husna, uh, satu geng dengan uh, Nurin, Nisrina, uh, Sarah, Sarah Fati, Sarah Hani. Okay, lima orang. Okay, Husna duduk kat Bentong. Apa yang you nampak? Satu. Yang you nampak satu je. Uh, kawasan tanah tinggi, tak ada tebing. Uh, you ambil gambar. And you discuss your part tu. You masukkan bagi dekat uh, ketua. Ketua siapa? Ketua Nurin kata, okay. Nah, Nurin, saya dah siapkan part saya. Apa yang terjadi dekat Bentong? Okay, Nurin pula. Nurin daripada uh, duduk dekat, Nurin duduk dekat Ulu Langat. Okay, so Ulu Langat lain pula cerita dia. Ada sungai, sungai tu jadi cetek. Okay, so what you predict, your crit your, you critic, you critic dengan you punya idea. Okay, you comments on on that particular situation. Okay, so apa punca dia, kenapa, apa yang you observe. Okay, so another content. Okay, so uh, siapa pula? Uh, Sarah Hani duduk dekat um, dekat Kuantan. Okay, so Kuantan lain pula you nampak uh, uh, you nak uh, Sarah Hani on the way pergi ke Bentong. You nampak dekat LPT dia ada buat cerun. Okay, cerun ni dia tutup dengan rumput-rumput. So it's very good pula. It can be either positive ataupun negative. It's a discussions about the land management which ada positive impacts, negative impacts. Okay, apa yang um, kita dah buat untuk reduce the 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 impact to the environment. Okay, so uh, through observations and you can comments and critics. Okay, so in each group you should have four to five. Okay, uh, so dalam satu group akan ada empat hingga lima content. Okay. Kalau ada yang tak ada tu, um, you might uh, share with others and uh, helps the others untuk uh, ni lah. I, I, I nak minimum 4 to 5. Okay. 4 is minimum lah. Okay. So meaning that each one of you in a group should contribute one. Okay. So settle yang pasal uh, the task of field trip. Number two is you are required to prepare two slides. Only two slide, eh? ada dua slide saja of presentation regarding what you had observed. Okay, so on the 19th January, you will, uh, you will, apa ni, you will present. Okay, contoh ada lima konten, seorang satu present. Sekejap je dalam satu minit kan seorang. Okay, so, um, okay that's all. Any question? Do you have any question? Is it? Kenapa dua slide? Saya tak nak panjang-panjang sebab uh, I think you dah dua page. Saya, uh, you ingat kan? Uh, tak. Uh, one group, dua slide. Saya limitkan dua sebab saya tak nak you panjang-panjang. Dia tak payah panjang-panjang pun. Eh, the content have to be correct. Ada gambar and you comment about that situation. Boleh tak? Saya tak nak panjang-panjang sebab I know that you have a lot of lab report dengan assignment tapi yang ni saya memang kena bagi sebab kalau ikut course outline kita memang akan ada dua assignment, empat lab, satu quiz, satu field trip and satu presentation which I have to do. Kalau saya tak buat saya kena tanya dengan auditor. Okay this is yang kita dah ikut dah dalam course outline. Bukan saya sengaja-sengaja bagi, saya tak bagi extra pun. This is the minimum required. Okay so what I can help you adalah Uh, macam itulah, do as as simple as you uh, as you can but it is but it is informative. Okay, bila you tengok tu, apa yang saya harapkan adalah you can think. Contoh, you nampak, uh, siapa duduk kat Kuantan? Ada anyone from you from Kuantan tak? 
tak ada kan okey contoh macam you nampak dekat a uh, uh, ni Husna mesti selalu nampak kan dekat area bentong tu Husna kan tepi jalan tu ada orang tanam-tanam pokok kan macam mana dia boleh dapat ladang tu okey sedangkan dia dekat kawasan Cerun Lepas tu macam Husna, Husna duduk kat Bentong katalah ada pula dekat belakang rumah dia orang buat penanaman uh, pokok balak har- pokok balak pula pokok durian haram. Okay tapi dia biarkan kawasan cerun tu terdedah tak ada cover crops. Okay so you rasa ni salah ni tak boleh sebab nanti air tu jadi run off. Air tak boleh infiltrate very well dalam soil. So dia jadi run off sebab Itulah apa yang nampak dekat karak, dekat bentung tu air hujai turun dengan lumpur dan dia menyebabkan apa <coughs> dan dia menyebabkan uh, yang bawah-bawah ni kena sebenarnya apa yang jadi ha, macam tu okey faham tak Nurin faham ah uh, contohnya okey bukan hanya tertakluk pada tu any any soil management contohnya Nurin tanam uh, buat ladang ladang pokok limau kat belakang rumah you pergi gembur semua tanah-tanah tu you tak ada cover crops okey then ah uh, you tak ada letak organic matter pun you pakai bajet NPK je then you can take picture yang penting gambar menerangkan situasi keadaan dan content dalam tiga ayat macam tu je lah Okay, so we can share among others what is happening at your area. What is your idea about your area? Macam tu. Just a simple one. Sebab tu saya combinekan in one group. Okay, so um, list of the groups akan uh, saya terus bagilah boleh tak? Okay, tak apalah nanti saya upload dekat dalam ni. Eh? Nanti saya baca-baca. Yeah, yeah. Terlost pula. Okay, clear. Okay, so yang ni saya bagi dua minggu. Sampai 16 Januari eh. Sampai 16 Januari. Okay. So settle. Untuk lab petang ni. Okay. Untuk lab petang ni saya ada sediakan. Which is lab number 4. Settle eh. Nak selesaikan. Saya bagi awal-awal. Saya tak nak tunggu lambat lagi. Tapi saya bagi dia punya due date on. On sekejap eh. Due date is on. Minggu ni minggu.